This is the actual SaaS subscription cohort table for the very first subscription we had on Slidebean. But this might not make any sense to you. Cohort tables are incredibly useful, but in order to read them, you need to understand MRR and LTV and churn and CAC and SaaS quick ratio and all these acronyms, SaaS acronyms that business school doesn't teach you. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? But if you do, then this table becomes something of a palantir, a crystal ball that lets you estimate really accurately how a business will grow and what its potential might be. So in this video, I wanna take you from the very basic SaaS KPIs to SaaS Nirvana, getting the really complex metrics, understanding them, and more crucially, showing you how to use them to predict the future. Big disclaimer, I'm really starting from the very basics. So I'll make sure that we do the chapters thing on the description if you want to skip to the parts that you already know. Okay, so the very essence of SaaS is predictable revenue, which is something that transactional revenue will never give you. <clears throat> Probably the reason why everything has become a subscription now. Everything starts with this, MRR. MRR is monthly recurring revenue, and that's a mouthful, and I'm not gonna repeat it again, I'm just gonna say MRR from now on. But it is the backbone of everything that we're gonna look into today. So let's say that you come up with a subscription service for candy, and convert your first customer at $49 a month. That's very affordable candy. The essence of subscription revenue is that you can assume that this customer will stick around for a while. If you're a good candy dealer, you will retain them. For example, if you're able to hold this imaginary customer for say, two years, you'll make almost $1,200 from them. All the revenue a customer pays you makes up for the customer's lifetime value, often called LTV or CLTV. Now in software, since the cost of running a software platform is usually very cheap, the lifetime value is often just the revenue. But in other business models like meal kit subscriptions, they might include the cost of the food or the cost of the materials and define the lifetime value as the profit part of the revenue or the gross profit part. But the important thing here is knowing what your lifetime value is lets you budget how much you can spend to bring new customers. For example, you can offer free trials or free samples. And as long as you don't spend more than your customer lifetime value, you can spend that marketing money knowing that you're gonna have ROI. ROI. Radio on internet. R return on investment. Okay, but customers don't stick around forever. So let's talk about churn. <laughs> The churn rate is the percentage of customers or revenue that you lose in a given period. And it's the exact opposite of retention rate. Let's take a sample scenario where we converted 100 customers on the first month of being in business. However, we lost 20 customers the month after. To estimate our churn rate, we take the customers that we lost and divide them by the amount of customers that we had. Retention would be the exact opposite. We would take the retained customers instead of the lost customers and again, divide them by the number of customers that we had. So that's customer churn, which is the easiest to grasp. The official formula for churn is lost customers divided by customers at the start of the period times 100. And in this case, a period is defined as a month, but you may also have annual churn and define your periods as every year. Churn is always estimated based on the customers at the previous period. So if the company had brought new customers this month, their churn would still have been 20% because it's based on the customers from the previous period. Now we usually do this on a per period basis. So from one month to the other, even if a customer cancels right away, they have actually paid for the entire month. So you can assume that they were active for one whole period. Now churn really, really sucks. Say that this business continues to bring 100 customers every month, but they lose 20% of customers every month. They have a 20% churn rate. This is how customer growth would look for that company. Fast growth at the beginning, but then it just stalls. What's happening here is that the company is bringing those 100 customers per month, but eventually they're also losing about 100 customers per month because of churn. So revenue flatlines. We've been there, it happened to us. That's a story for another day. Notice how different those curves look at 5% churn, at 2% churn, or put in a different way, at 98% retention. For all of these curves, we're always bringing 100 customers per month. We're just retaining each customer longer. There is one good thing about churn though, which is that it lets you estimate, or rather predict, the number of customers that you're gonna have in the future. And this is the crystal ball that I was talking about before. If, for example, you know that your churn rate is 5%, maybe this is based on some months of being in business, some historical data, you can build a simple formula sheet that tells you pretty accurately how your customers will grow over time. But that's not all. If you divide one by the churn rate, you'll get the average lifetime of a customer. In this case, it's gonna be the average number of months. 
And this is totally right, and it's really accurate. A 5% churn means that the average customer will stay for 20 months. So here's how that batch of 100 customers would look over time. The elegant way to refer to a batch of customers in SaaS is a cohort, a cohort of users. So you would have 100 customers at the beginning, you'd have 57 customers by the end of year one, 17 customers still active three years later. While some might leave early and some might leave late, the average lifetime of a customer is 20 months. Okay, so things are about to get more complicated now because so far we've been dealing with customer numbers, not with revenue dollars. If you're lost so far, rewind, drop a question in the comments before moving on. Okay, now I've made a very simple spreadsheet that lets you dip your toes into some of the basics of the formulas that I've shown you. Totally free, I'm gonna link it in the description. Okay, so we know that the average customer stays for 20 months, and we know that our monthly candy subscription is 49 a month. So now we can find the average customer lifetime value. That's 49 times 20, which is $980. And we can even simplify the formula even more to say that LTV equals the monthly subscription divided by churn. As you can see, this churn and LTV math is the backbone of everything in a SaaS business. It dictates your marketing budget, the salaries of your sales team, because the golden rule in business is that LTV should be higher than the cost of bringing a customer, which gives us a new acronym, CAC, or cost of acquisition. A SaaS business is considered healthy if CAC is a third of your LTV, or put in a different way, your LTV should be at least three times your cost of acquisition. But let's go back to MRR and subscription revenue and start with annual plans. An annual plan that's say $49 a year obviously gives you $499 in cash right away. Pretty great, but that's not your MRR. Even though you got paid up front, your MRR is only $41 per customer, just one twelfth of the annual payment with the particular factor advantage that unless you have to give that customer a refund, you're gonna collect that MRR regardless. So your monthly churn will be 0%. Small technical accounting note. Some companies may choose to recognize the 499 as revenue upfront the month when it happens. And then some might choose to only recognize the MRR on a monthly basis, mostly to save some money on taxes. That's called accrual accounting. It's totally legal. It's just an accounting technicality, but do let me know if you'd like to see a video about that. Okay, so let's keep operating with this meth, I mean, uh, candy subscription that gets about 100 customers per month loses about 5% on a $49 a month subscription. We're dealing with MRR now, so it doesn't matter if the customer paid annually, we're looking at MRR, not cash flow. Two years in, 100 customers per month, this company is making just over $70,000 in MRR. A common metric that we use in SaaS is this ARR or annual run rate. And it's an easy one, it's just the annualized revenue. If we took that sample month for this business, $70,000 in MRR, we could say that the business has an annual run rate of $840,000. That means that if it doesn't bring or lose any customers, the company generates $840,000 per year. And investors often use ARR to find out what a valuation is for a startup or to figure out what stage a company is in. It's also a cool number because once you hit $83,333, well, you've built a $1 million ARR business. It's a two comma club type of thing. Okay, but now let's imagine that we're gonna introduce a new product here. Um, it, it's, it's a new type of candy and the new subscription is $99 a month. One taste and you will know. So we'll have both a $49 a month subscription and a $99 a month subscription. And let's say that 70 customers convert at $49 and 30 customers at $99. Together, there is $6,400 in MRR, and we've now unlocked a new metric for us, which is ARPU, sometimes called ARPA. Now let's see what happens next month. We're not doing new customers, just working out of the existing ones. And let's say that we lose five customers, but they're all customers from the cheap product, from the $49 a month subscription. Our customer churn rate, just like we saw before, is 5% but our MRR churn rate is smaller because we've retained some of the biggest customers. These numbers aren't tethered anymore. Even better, what if we had upgrades? Let's say that for example, 15 customers went from the OG $49 a month product subscription to the new product $99 a month subscription. Their MRR changed from $49 a month to $99 a month, which we would normally call expansion MRR. So our ARPU has grown. We're now making more revenue per customer, but check out our MRR churn rates. It's become negative. Now remember the original customer churn formula. It's the same idea. We're doing lost MRR divided by MRR at the beginning of the period. But here we've actually gained MRR. We did lose 245, but we gained 750, which would make 
losses, a negative number in this formula. Now, once we draw that out, you can check my math if you want, the result is minus 7.8%. So in a first glance, a 5% churn, you're losing 5% of customers every month, that's bad. But if the company is able to upgrade some of their existing customers, they're going to a bigger plan, they're paying more, maybe they're bringing more members into their account, more seats, that's gonna give you negative MRR churn, which is very much SaaS Nirvana. And this really gets investors going. Booyah! Wow! Some people might also refer to this metric as net revenue retention, which in this case, the net revenue retention is 107.8%, just the inverse of churn. All right, and then with all of this, you can finally grasp this cohort chart that I showed you earlier. If we look at it horizontally, we can see the lifetime of this batch of users based on the month when they originally came and how many of them we still retained after a certain amount of months. If we look at it vertically, we can see how much we've improved our retention over time. Are we getting better at keeping these customers through month one or through month two? as cohorts move on. Now, as I mentioned, I built this very simple spreadsheet to let you estimate how much your churn is affecting you and how much your business can grow if you reduce it. Now, if you need to bring your customer acquisition costs, your team costs, uh, other expenses, your cap table, you should look into our SaaS financial model template. I made one for this imaginary company where you can see how more complex variables affect the outcome of the company long-term. Hope this was all useful. We'll catch you on the next one.